Oh, it's officially that time of year. Got to break out the winter clothes. Somewhere in here is my coat. Yeah, there's my coat. I don't need my overalls quite yet, but I guess I better go ahead and get some of this stuff out. And we're going to start the day off with this one right here. I think this is a 55, if I remember right, somewhere around there. Chevrolet, 56, 57, I don't know. I always get confused on years on these things. I'm not an expert on them, and I don't claim to be. It's a pretty straight truck, not a whole lot of rust. It does have a little bit of rust. The hood has a little bit right there on both sides by the hood hinge. The cab corners, the fenders, all that stuff, pretty solid. The floors are solid, the door pockets are solid. As you can see there, a little bit of rust. So really, this truck isn't rusted nearly as badly as they usually are. Of course, it's got a rat nest in it and all that good stuff, but the guy said that they were driving it and using it up until a number of years ago, and they just parked it. The brakes go out on these old farm trucks, and so they just get parked and never driven again. A healthy layer of grease on this one. It would help if I actually would walk over and get an actual screwdriver, but you know that would make life too easy. Well, that's a first. The pad is blank, completely blank. So either somebody machined the number off or it never had it. So I'm not sure if somebody's replaced this motor or if it's the original motor and it's just something funky or what. But I have to find the actual casting number is back there in that corner. Obviously I can't really get to it in the truck. But at some point in time I will be pulling this cab and front clip off because somebody will buy that. So at that point in time I'll be able to figure out what the engine is. Until then I'll just keep it covered up and we'll worry about it another day. Whew man, finally a place out of the wind. I have not been able to record today. It has been so insanely windy out here. It is just flat blowing. We're having 50 and 60 mile an hour wind gusts right now. It's kind of hard to make videos when it's this windy. But anyway, since I wasn't able to film what I was doing earlier, we went and looked at a bunch of stuff. It's all stuff that we're not going to bother hauling for a week or two. And I probably won't even film that cleanup. It's nothing exciting. It's just a factory. I have a couple people coming to pick stuff up next week. So I guess what I'm going to do is because of this weather is I'm just going to go ahead and just stop the video before we go any further and we'll just start it up again next week. And welcome back. It is now Monday. The wind finally died down over the weekend. But one thing I need to do today is I've got a couple trucks that I sold the cabs off of. I need to dig those out and get started on that. I won't get it done today, but sometime this week I have to get that done. Saturday morning I went to a garage sale, bought some really cool stuff. So I'm going to show that to you now. Well, I take that back. I actually went to two garage sales and at the second garage sale, this is one of the items that I bought, a bunch of wooden blocks. But at the first garage sale, there's bunches of brand new stuff in the box. This is a set of speakers. Uh, Atlas Sound is the brand on these. They're still brand new in the box like this. There's two of these, and I think I gave five bucks a piece for them. I'm not sure what they're worth, but I'll put them on eBay, and I guess I'll find out. Then I got this here. This is a pretty cool piece. It says Coca-Cola on it. Yeah, this still actually works. Some of the little black pieces on here are kind of falling off. You can see I just barely touch it and it falls off. So it's going to need all the new, all new of uh, these black lines, whatever you call those put on there. I got a bunch of radios, CB radios, uh, aftermarket radios. Both of these are used. Uh, this one's a Lafayette and this one's a Courier Classic 2. But uh, they're both really in pretty good condition still. So I went ahead and grabbed them. I think I got a whole pile of radios for $20. I'll show you the others here in a second. This isn't a radio. This is a Sure Brothers microphone, model 444. I don't know what it's worth, but it was five bucks, so why not? Here's a Sears eight track player, compact. Just an old under dash unit or whatever you would call it. I think it was an under dash unit, but you could put it in your car, your boat, whatever you wanted to put it in. Most of the stuff I'm gonna put on eBay, which the link to my eBay is in the description of every video. If you see something in a video and you don't see it on there, feel free to email me about it. Sometimes the stuff is already sold by the time you see the video. And other times I just never got around to putting it on there, so I might still have it. This is, oh, it's a Motorola AM radio aftermarket, brand new in the box. And then here's an Onan carburetor. I don't know what it goes to. It's not really marked, but it's brand new in the box. Here's a piece here that actually came from the second garage sale that I went to. I just loved the color on this phone. It was $10 and I figured uh, for $10, a bright yellow phone, you can't go wrong with that. Then he had this turn indicator or whatever this is. It's marked U.S. Air Force, and I just thought it was a really neat piece. It's a little bit corroded, but, I mean, it's very old, so what do you expect? And then also there was a couple, what brand are these? They're compasses, but uh, I don't see the brand. Oh, there it is right there. Airpath is the brand on these. And then the last thing I got at that sale was a whole box of 308 magazines. Okay, now back to the first sale that I went to. Oh, upside down. Flip it over. Check these out. These are pretty cool. These are aftermarket mirrors. Uh, what does it call them? Blow the eye level mirrors. This style here. They're painted. They're not chrome. It kind of looks like chrome in the picture, but they're painted. But I got two of these brand new in the box. And then these here, I kind of gambled on these. I don't know what they're worth. If they're worth anything at all, I don't usually deal in lamps. Then I got this box here. 
Got a bunch of little, if I can get them out of there. There we go, just a bunch of little pulleys. But the main thing that I wanted in this box was this right here. It's a Ford, uh, yeah, AM FM 8 track. Thought that was a pretty cool piece. I don't know what it goes to for sure. Something out of the 70s, maybe early 80s, but I'm thinking like late 70s. Got a bunch of old furniture hardware. Just kind of neat little brass pieces that I can throw on eBay. Then I got this Trailblazer camp stove. I just thought it was kind of unique. It's brand new in the box still. Looks like it's never been used. The uh, canister is empty, so it must have developed a leak over time or something like that. But I figured, you know, if nothing else, you could still buy those canisters brand new. So I thought it would make kind of a cool little video for the second channel. But wait, there's more. I got a boatload of fire extinguishers. There's pyrenes, there's firefighters, you name it. They're in here. A bunch of these have brackets. That's the main reason why I wanted these. There was a bunch more there, but some of the other ones were still kind of, that were still there were kind of rough, didn't have the labels on them anymore, so didn't mess with those. I'd say probably my favorite are these right here, the firefighters. Oh, and I got this one right here. I forgot about that one. Just like a little handheld one. I got some emblems off an old Grumman van. Thought they were kind of neat. The Curb Master. This is kind of heavy. Let's see if you guys can see in there. It's just clear full of valves. Valve, I mainly wanted the valve handles, but I mean, there's a bunch of brass in there too that I can scrap later. Probably get my money back out of the scrap and the valves will be my profit. Or the valve handles, I'm sorry. Then here's a couple camp stoves. I think this, yeah, this is a Coleman two burner. And this is a Wenzel or Wenzel, however you say it, two burner. They're both missing the attachments that uh, hook up to the propane, unfortunately. I'll have to see if I can find those new. Once again, I'll make some content out of them. Then I got this whole box of cans. And this is what's in them. Nitro. Marine engines. Nitro 9. I'm not entirely sure what it's for. It says helps increase gas mileage, helps increase horsepower. I don't know, maybe it's kind of like seafoam. I really don't know. But I just liked them because they had the little boat on them right there. And then I bought this shifter right here. I don't know what it's out of. I just thought it was kind of neat. It's probably out of some sort of box fan. Or he used to have a bunch of street sweepers, so it might be out of one of those. Hard telling. But, you know, for five bucks, why not? And then last but not least, I got this old Federal. I think this is a yeah, federal sign and signal. This old siren here. We hooked it up to a battery. It doesn't work. It tries to spin and it goes clunk and just moves a tiny bit. So I'm guessing probably either the windings are bad or maybe it just needs a really good cleaning. It is really dirty. It's been sitting in storage for a long time. So I'll tinker with that a little bit later. This thing's heavy. <laughs> and you can probably see all these cans that are sitting around in the back of my truck. Those a guy brought out to me this morning. I'm just going to cut those up for junk lanterns probably at some point in time. But with that, I'm going to put all this stuff away and then we're going to get busy. I'm going to dig those trucks out so we can start cutting cabs.
Well, I got that cab off and I had to run and pick something up and it got windy while I was gone and the sun was still out. It was pretty nice. I get back from what I was picking up and uh, it's cold out here. I had to put my coat back on, but that's okay. I've got a lot to do. I got two of the vehicles set out tomorrow that people are coming for. Uh, there might be somebody else coming as well, but I don't want to set their vehicle out until I know for sure. This old 55 is just about ready to go in the crusher pile. I thought somebody might want this old 272 that's on here. It was a good running engine. It was parked in the barn. It's been covered up until just now, obviously. I hate to just scrap it, but 272s just don't have a whole lot of value, unfortunately. But I listed it for sale. I'll give it a few days. If it doesn't sell by next week sometime and nobody's interested, I'll go ahead and pull the carburetor off, pull the radiator off, and then the rest of this is just going to go in the scrap pile. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. I've got a 55 Chevy. I've got to pull the cabin clip off of next, so I'm going to go ahead and dig it out. Okay, we got everything on the bottom side cut. So now I just gotta get the two front mounts up here and then I gotta do everything inside the cab. Of course, I knew there was two things under here I needed to cut, and when it was up in the air, I forgot all about them. I don't want to put it back up there just to cut two things, so I'll just go ahead and do them down here on the ground. There we go. Came right off of there, and now we can see what this engine is. Just gotta scrape all this grease off. I would've never been able to tell what this was with the cab still on there. This thing's so greasy. 3892657. Well, a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad news. That casting number is a 1967 casting number. They only use that one year, and but they use it on the 302, they use it on the 327, and they use it on a 350. Unfortunately, like I discovered earlier, this has been sanded off or ground off, machined off, whatever you want to call it. However, at some point in time, somebody slapped some newer 350 heads on it. I ran the numbers on those and they're just common truck heads, so I'm guessing somebody just threw this engine together with whatever they had laying around. It could be a 350, the block itself. Uh, the, the casting number on that making it a 67 might make the block worth something, unless it's been bored out crazy or something like that. The guy's going to have to tear it apart to see what it is for sure. That's pretty common out here in farm country. They will slap together whatever they have laying around. I have seen all sorts of funky stuff under the hood of these things where they piece together engines. That's really a bummer on those heads. Even if it had the original heads on it, even if it was a 327, being a 67 like that might be worth something. But being newer heads, and actually now that I look at it, this carburetor is not even bolted down all the way. So yeah, they, they never even finished piecing this thing together or they probably drove it like that. So that's unfortunate. Even these ram horde manifolds are uh, broken out. 
So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna go ahead and knock the front bumper off for my wall hangers that need front bumpers. And then I've just gotta cut eight bolts on the bed and then it'll come right off. Then I'll set it to the side and see if I can find somebody interested in this. If not, later on, I'll throw it in the scrap pile. But it has been a crazy day. I've been doing everything by myself, and so I've just been super, super busy. I bought probably 50, 60 catalytic converters today, and who knows what else I've got done. I bought cars. I don't even remember everything I did. I've been processing a bunch of vehicles, getting those beds ripped off, getting motors pulled, getting cabs pulled, you name it. But uh, this car just came in. There's a couple of catalytic converters in the trunk of this one, and there's still one underneath it as well. I gotta get that off of there. Kind of a shame on this one. These cars are actually starting to get somewhat popular. These little Hondas, but nothing left of this one. But yeah, I'll get those. Those are just cheap converters there, so I'll grab them out of there anyway. Looks like an aluminum wheel right there, and a couple of the wheels on the car didn't melt. I got this truck here. I started cutting the bed off of it. There's one piece of iron at the very back of the truck. I'll go back here and show it to you. I'm getting ready to see if the uh, rear tires will hold air so I can wheel it out of here. It doesn't roll very good on flat tires. It does roll, but not very good. But I need to cut that piece of steel there that the hitch is on. I started cutting it with the whiz wheel up there, but then I discovered that it's solid steel. And so it'll just cut a whole lot easier with the torch instead of the whiz wheel. Then once I get that off of there, I should be able to lift this bed right off of here. Oh, there's another tag right there I need to get off. I already pulled two of them, one off each side. But I think once I get the bed off of this truck, it'll sell a lot better. It'll look a lot better, present a lot better. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully this tire holds air. These old tube rims almost always hold air. This thing's only been sitting for 30 years or so, and I've seen these things sit for 60 years and still hold air. Change of plans. I can actually reach the valve stem on the inside tire, so I'll just air it up instead, assuming it holds air. But uh, it looks like it's taking air. And there we go. That tire doesn't look much better, but you can see that one there has some air in it. I like this compressor. It's super handy. It works really good. However, if you don't have the big battery on it, it runs out of juice fast. I think I almost like the little tiny ones better than this big one. This one here is handy because it actually builds up air pressure. That way if you need to seat the uh, bead on a tire or something like that, you can get it done fairly quickly with this one. But uh, other than that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the small little tiny one. Before I work on that anymore, I'm finally gonna show you guys this truck. I've been wanting to show you guys this truck all day today. I was gonna show you first thing this morning, but I've never had a moment today where I didn't have people here. So I haven't really had a chance to do anything yet. But here it is. This is a 19, I have no clue. Uh, whatever you want to say it is, it's a mix of you know, you name it, whatever they had handy, they put it together, and he did a pretty good job of putting it together, honestly. But basically what this is, is this is a Diamond T cab with a GMC cab over front clip. Both of those are out of the 40s, and then the chassis is a 1950s chassis, military chassis. I believe it's a 216 engine with a four-speed transmission. It's four-wheel steering, four-wheel drive. Obviously, originally, this was the front of the chassis, so they said they turned the gears around in the transmission to where it drives that direction now. 
he actually put the effort in to take the original wheels, cut the center out, and then put these implement wheels on it instead. That's actually pretty handy because those old split rims are kind of a nightmare to deal with. Whereas these here are a little bit more workable. Put a bumper and headlights on it to make it look a little bit better. The fenders are made from scratch, completely from scratch. And some of the bodywork is made from scratch as well. This little filler panel section. He didn't have to do all this. Very easily could have just stuck a seat on the frame and called it good. But whoever had this thing was very proud of it. Sorry for the sun glare. It's that time of day where the sun's glaring that crazy. I'll try to cover up with my hand a little bit. But uh, it's got a real fancy seat in it. Milk crate. It's right hand drive. The, uh, the rear steering is disconnected. So it's just like it is. But it's everything is there to hook it back up. The missing door is up there. And check out the clearance. Very, very tight clearance. You can see there, I mean, it almost hits the cab. He really put some thought and engineering into this, whoever built this. The guy I got it from actually isn't the one that built it. It was another guy is the one that built it and he had it, but uh, I guess he's pretty elderly, can no longer use it. And it was just sitting. So I saw it on Marketplace. I was headed to Colorado. I said, if it's still there when I get back from Colorado and Texas, then I'll go ahead and buy it. And a week and a half later, when I got back from Texas, it was still on there. So I messaged my friend. I said, hey, can you haul this on your trailer? It won't fit on mine. And he said, you bet. So I went ahead and bought it. It does have one crunch in this door right here, which is unfortunate, but I mean, that's not too terrible. The truck's neat enough as is that uh, I think that's, that's workable. For what I paid for it, I'm pretty sure the cabin front clip is worth that much by itself. But all the neat ideas I have for this thing, if I can uh, ever find time to actually work on it, the cylinders that control everything are these right here. And then these arms here and what happens is is this bucket is spring loaded to hold it in place and then as you go up in the air these cables get tight and it automatically makes the bucket dump up in the air and if you're wondering what happened to my hand right there that's called i was running the torch and i wasn't wearing gloves actually no i was wearing gloves i was wearing an old worn out pair though and they they didn't have anything protecting me right there shortly after that is when i went and bought those blue gloves you might have seen me wearing those ones that are full length gloves but uh, the engine still turns on this. I guarantee you it would fire right up and run without too much trouble. It does have one tire that's completely rotted and coming off the rim, so uh, I'll have to figure that one out. But what I'm thinking is, obviously there's always a chance I may just wind up selling this thing, but uh, if I don't sell it, I think what I'm gonna do is take the bucket off of it and then just put something else up here on the front of it. Obviously I'll leave the fenders and all that, but once all this bracket works off of here, the guy can mount all sorts of things up here in the front of this. This would make a really cool Mad Max type build. So endless possibilities. I haven't really had time to mess with it too much right now. Things are just so insanely busy. I've got a bunch of farm cleanups I need to get done, just small ones, but still I got a bunch of cleanup jobs I got to get done. I'm always busy filming different things for YouTube, always busy processing vehicles that people are buying. Plus I got to run the junkyard full time too. So always something going on. But I don't know, what would you guys do with this thing? Put it in the comments. Would you leave the bucket on it? Really with the bucket on here, it's kind of a one trick pony. If you're not dealing, you can't really dig dirt with it. You can only basically dig cattle feed, things like that with it. You could probably do sand with it as long as you didn't put too much in the bucket at once. But I don't even want to know what it would cost to rebuild one of these cylinders if you needed a new shaft or something like that. It'd probably be pretty expensive. So I really think this, this bucket setup really limits its potential. So I really think that all needs to come off and do something different with it. Also, this thing is an absolute nightmare for me to move around with the loader because I can't pick it up obviously or else I'll bend all the drive shafts and everything. So I have to come around and hook onto this bucket with a chain and pull it and have somebody steer it everywhere I go. And then backing it up, I have to put the bucket down and then to shove it and once again, have somebody steer it. And when I put the truck right here where it's at now, I didn't have anybody helping me do it. So it was kind of a pain. It took me forever of getting in and out of the loader. So like I said, I don't know if I wanted to actually do something with this, make some sort of yard buggy out of it, or if I'm just gonna go ahead and sell it. Like I say, there's, there's a lot of different things I can do with it. I'm not much for working on vehicles. It's not something I've ever really been into. I like tearing stuff apart and then paying somebody else to work on vehicles. So if I do fix this up and do something with it, I'll have to rely on people like Sean or people like that whenever they have time to come help me with it. Years ago, my friend that was renting the shop from me that was a mechanic, I was really hoping things would work out to where he would uh, be able to help me do stuff like that. Sorry, just trying to watch where I'm going so I don't trip and fall. But anyway, I was hoping that was gonna work out and he was gonna start a YouTube channel and he did start a YouTube channel and things are gonna go good, but uh, none of that ever happened. None of that ever worked out like I thought it would. So hopefully Sean has time to help me, but he's just as busy as I am. So I guess we'll see what happens. And like I say, there's a good chance that somebody may just wanna buy that whole thing anyway. And if that's the case, then on the road, it'll go. I did buy two more vehicles this morning. You guys saw those. There was that little Jeep short bed. I'll go show that to you now. And then there's the 53 Ford dump truck. So while I got a little bit of daylight left, let's go check those out. While I'm walking over there, I forgot to mention that I did go ahead and pull that engine. Ooh, that sun. 
there we go fix that that sun glaring on me was bright should have brought my sunglasses instead of safety glasses but uh, anyway that engine i have a guy who wants to go ahead and buy that from me uh, he says he'll take a chance on it we're thinking it's probably a 327 it's got the uh, canister style oil filter so it's not a 350 it's a small journal so there's a real small chance that it's the 302 but more than likely it is definitely a 327 block with 350 heads and uh, 283 exhaust manifolds but i told a guy you know what 200 bucks as is it's worth that for a core so he said yeah why not so he's supposed to come get that next week and then that mercedes that i just loaded up that 6.3 liter that is headed to houston he mainly just wants it for parts plus that's a really rare engine so he's going to do that i didn't know if anybody would want it or not because of the rat nest condition of it but i guess that one was worth enough here's the jeep pickup unfortunately we could not find the tailgate or he could not find the tailgate he looked everywhere for it couldn't find it anywhere it's a little bit of rust in the bed typical jeep they're always rusty in the bed but the cab is not too bad really and then what i thought was cool is it does have bucket seats in it tilt column automatic kind of an optioned out truck and then it even has the little uh, deals that go on top of the bed sides it's cool that they actually saved them and put them back in the jeep instead of just losing them unfortunately the engine's all or the hood i'm sorry is all cockeyed so the engine probably got rained in probably no good but it's just a 360 anyway those aren't too hard to find this is a 79 model i believe but it's an old jeep that's been sitting out in the field forever so what do you expect oh it's got a sliding rear window in it too i just noticed that so i think somebody will buy this one here i know it's not very exciting but i bought that today too an 08 super duty really a pretty a solid truck and no rust at all pretty clean truck it's kind of a shame that it got scrapped out but it's got a blown motor and the farmer that sold it wanted to keep the bed off of it, it had a flatbed and then the guy that bought it from him needed the front clip for his truck so he pulled all the parts off that he needed and so really there's just not enough left of it to put it back together but i have a guy wanting to buy the chassis out of it to put under a 70s ford extended cab so it will be reused it won't just get scrapped see i do have a heart everybody says oh you're heartless you just crush everything but uh see if you put the money out there i'm happy to save anything it's the times that everybody wants me to save stuff but they don't want to actually pay anything for it that's when it runs into the uh the danger of the green machine and here's the 53 pretty solid cab on this one a little bit beat up got some body damage but it's not a rot box like they usually are front clips really beat up so it's probably going to get cut up for art but i do have a title for this one so i'll probably pull the cab off and sell that and then the engine stuck and the, the chassis obviously is just junk so the rest of it will probably get parted out or not parted out get crushed there might be some engine parts or whatnot that i save on it but being a 53 is that still a flathead i can't remember i think 53 was the last year of the flathead so i might save the engine anyway I can't get the hood to pop open however I kind of peeked in there where it's open a little bit at the back and it is the good flathead so I will definitely go ahead and save that motor even if it is stuck there's going to be a lot of good parts on there those late flatheads are always good property I've never not sold one of those even in poor condition so a lot of good stuff there oh and I forgot to mention the jeep at least it was headed to the crusher if I didn't buy it it was going to go right to the claw they were going to smash it drop it in the pile haul it to the shredder so yours truly mister hates cars and destroys everything saved that jeep from the crusher so just remember that next time you feel like commenting oh this guy destroys everything that is such a cool hood ornament every time i walk past this truck i see that. i really need to just take it off of there for somebody to get sticky fingers i never really have a problem with that out here i've got cameras everywhere but still it just makes me a little bit nervous somebody could be out here looking at old cars and whatnot and i try to walk with people when they're walking around the yard just for that reason but uh, still it makes me nervous i need to get that off of there but i'm getting quite the crusher pile here i'm thinking probably late winter early spring we'll bring the crusher back in here by then i'll probably have enough to crush a few loads out of here i think i'm gonna finish that gmc another day i'm starting to get really sore it's been a long day i've been working for about 12 hours now so i have a lot more work to do once i get home i've got to edit a video i've got to package a bunch of ebay stuff that's what i'm doing now is i got to find all the stuff that sold on ebay i sold some of these hubcaps uh, not that one not that one but I sold these three here, Chevy truck caps. Kind of neat how I had three different generations. Had the early 60s, the mid 60s, and the late 60s. I sold those, and then I sold, I think it was this, yeah, this gauge right here. And I gotta say, it is absolutely beautiful out here tonight. We've had a lot of wind and bad weather here lately, but today it is just nice. It was warm earlier, but this is perfect camping weather. I wish I had time for it. Unfortunately, I just don't with so much going on right now. Hopefully this winter I can make some time because that's really what I want to do. I really want to start putting more content out on the second channel of junkyard camping, 
working on the junkyard cabin. I got all sorts of ideas. I've got the stuff to do the ideas. I just lack the time. So definitely, if you haven't subscribed to the second channel, you might want to go over there and do that. But with that, I am going to head out for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in this video. It wasn't just one thing going on. Sometimes it's hard for me to come up with a title for the video. Sometimes it's hard to come up with a thumbnail. So I think that really cool cab over truck, when I got that, I thought, you know what? That's going to have to be the thumbnail and the title. But like always, let me know in the comments which thing in this video was your favorite. With that, I'll see you on the next one. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.